Stephen and Estelle from Catamaran Guru. When we decided to go for a performance boat, we wanted a boat that would do wind speed in the lower ranges of wind. So, you know, and when I say wind speed, I'm talking true wind speed, not apparent wind speed. So if the wind was blowing eight knots, we would, you know, true wind, we want a boat that'll do eight knots of boat speed. There's just nobody that competes with Katana in terms of the living space and comfort. Katana beats everybody just hands down. We were looking for a solid boat, you know, we don't want the newer shrouds to be cranging around if we are if we're hard on the wind. This boat is super stiff. Because we do long distance cruising, we wanted a boat that was capable of doing at least 250 miles a day. Having now sailed this boat a couple of thousand miles, um, some very bad conditions, uh, some beautiful conditions. Uh, all around, we, we found that it's an all-rounder. It handles bad weather very well. Um, in light conditions and smooth seas, it sails like a dream. We've, re we've raced them in, we've raced in some of the regattas and basically beat everybody. So um, all, overall, the boat just checked all the boxes that we were looking for. The Pictada definitely, in my opinion, is the ultimate performance cruising boat. It's the first boat that they've made that does not have the helm stations on the scoops. The helm station has been moved up almost to midships um, and it's a single bulkhead wheel with a really nicely laid out helm station where you can see all four corners of the boat. Uh, it has a set of really nice uh, high performance winches which make life really easy. All the lines come back to that helm station and so sailing the boat shorthanded turned out to be really good. Some of the observations, because I'm sure everyone's interested to hear the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, in terms of sailing ability, the boat uh, in strong and light winds. In light winds, the boat will sail at wind speed. Uh, during the regatta, when we were really all going for it, uh, we had about six, six knots of, of, of true wind. Uh, we were doing six knots of boat speed. So that really turned out to be a big plus. The daggerboard design is actually great because you can, with, at the push of a button, you can lower and, and raise the, the daggerboards. And these daggerboards gave us amazing weather ability. Um, you know, uh, when we were racing again, we, we, there was a point that everyone had to get through. I think we were the only boat that was able to make the point without having to tack. Uh, to get further out. So we really have proven out that the dagger boards and the light wind ability are great. So that's that's one of the goods. Um, in the stronger winds, the boat is pretty fast. Um, you know, you have to reef early with this boat. Uh, it's got a pretty powerful main. It's got uh, three head sails. It's got a, a, G a Genoa, a Screecher and a, a Jenica. Uh, the Jenica was rather large. Um, we found that uh, it, it, it didn't trim out as well as we liked. We're going to be making some modifications and moving the, the, the point back, the, the point where the block goes back a bit. The Screecher was amazing. Um, it gave us unbelievable weather ability and performance. Uh, the Genoa and the main by themselves, uh, you know, the boat, the boat will sail at eight to ten knots in, 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 in eight to ten knots of breeze if it's on the beam. So we found that the sailing ability was great. The helm station was great. Um, one of a few of the things we needed to work on is the anchoring system. The anchoring system is, is, is uh, as you would expect on a performance boat, it's a long chain to, to a bow roller. We're looking at making some adjustments there and we'll keep you posted on how we, how we, how we figure out the, 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 the anchoring system. Um, the nets, the nets are nice small, small holes, but we found it to be very stretchy. We're considering uh, putting um, some Dyneema nets on uh, to, to, to just to just make it a lot stiffer when you walk in up front there. The, the nets are very, there's a lot of give in them, especially for us little people. Um, but uh, that that's up front. Otherwise, you know, the performance, the, the, the buoyancy, everything is great. The sails handled great. We liked we, we liked the whole lot, except for the the Jenica needs a little bit of a, a tweak on the uh, on, on the block uh, where the sheet goes through. Side decks are really nice and wide with good handholds. Um, we did like these solar panels. The entire coach roof is covered in solar panels. Um, there's 1,800 watts of solar 
and this pretty much kept us uh, not having to use our generator to charge batteries so our solar the solar charging turned out to be a big plus um, one thing that should be noted is that on the katana it, it it's 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 a it's a very fast boat it's very stiff it's strong and the bulkheads are carbon the stringers are carbon and the reinforcements where the chain plates are carbon and then from the deck up the entire coach roof and everything is carbon when we dropped one of the ceiling panels you look up and you see black carbon and so the whole roof from deck up is all carbon so what katana have done is they've they've done a very very clever weight distribution where the, the as you go up everything gets lighter and is made of carbon so your writing moment is pretty is pretty robust on this boat um, Internally, uh, the one thing that we weren't that uh, well that, that we think needs to be tweaked is the big sliding door. That's great for livability, but when you're hard on the wind, it tends to jump. So we're going to be looking at getting some 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 latches to hold that down. But apart from that, the, the big sliding door was a pleasure and made livability unbelievable because it, you know you have this huge open walkthrough space and the galley. Um, the chart table was awesome. We did some watches at the chart table. There's a 16 inch uh, chart plotter up there and it's a forward facing chart so you can look forwards when you're sailing, which is really nice. Um, it has two lounges, uh, you know, so, so you know, it's, it's really a boat that's super comfortable for four people. It starts getting a little bit uncomfortable with six because now the seating is split. But for four people, it's, it's a great design. We really liked it. Bridge deck is high very quiet boat you don't you almost never hear slamming um, we had a big dinghy on the back and it carried the dinghy rather well um, so you know probably we were a little bit oversized on the dinghy but uh, even with that oversized dinghy it handled things very well um, overall livability of the boat was great space was great uh, loved the performance um, and uh, really looking forward to getting on her again and, and uh, doing another ocean passage because that's what she's built for. She's built for fast, safe offshore passages. Um, so I'm gonna let Estelle talk about the galley and the cabins uh, and hopefully she won't forget about the rain shower that we have, which is quite a novelty that we've never had on a boat before. So here's Estelle. I, I have been very impressed with uh, the storage inside of the boat. Um, I, you know, I'm used to the Bali 54 that uh, this just oodles of storage. Well, this is um, this is really up there. Uh, even in the cabins, um, I have plenty of storage. My uh, food storage, great. Uh, the the thing in the galley is that the the prep table is very small compared to to obviously the Bali but uh, it does have an island in the middle so you know you, you can do some prepping on there but as far as the uh, the general space in the galley it's a little small um, but I had uh, six people with us uh, for a lot of the time and uh, we made it work it's it's not it's not unworkable there's lots of uh, good ventilation in the galley, uh, which is, you know, a lot of galleys don't have that. There's an opening hatch right above the, the galley. The, the lighting is, is really good. Um, lights over the, over the stovetop, very good. Um, um, refrigeration is fantastic in this boat. <laughs> uh, Stephen is just uh, so impressed because he has a beer fridge. <laughs> um, so yes, we have uh, a full, um, full size fridge like the Bali's have, um, freeze, fridge and freezer. Uh, and then we have two drawers as well. And uh, I, I just don't have any lack of space for that as far as that's concerned. The two front windows that open up uh, uh, all the way. And so the ventilation is fantastic within the, uh, the cabin or the salon. Um, there's two seating areas. Um, the one thing we did change from the standard is the standard table that we get from from Katana. Um, we just didn't want another big table to scoot around, so we changed that um, into a coffee table that opens up um, to become a big table. Um, that way, it just gives us a lot more flexibility as to where to lounge in the boat. 
Um, and then, of course, it has this wonderful seating in the front of the boat, which is sort of a, a formal lounge, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> if you would lived in a house but yeah that's really really nice you know it's, uh, that's where I slept on, uh, on passage and it was very very comfortable um, as for the cabins um, it's it's not a complete walk around bed but it's uh, very comfortable we um, it's easy to make the bed uh, easy to get around the bathroom is fantastic it's it's very nice and spacious I have a um, uh, washer dryer in there um, and then we have a rain shower as Stephen mentioned before uh, and he's uh, six five and he stands up in the rain shower and, and has plenty of space so um, all in all it's really a great liveaboard boat um, coming from the from the Bali 54 I have to say I didn't know that I was going to enjoy it as much as I did, and um, but it is a it's a very comfortable boat for uh, a couple, and certainly for people not a problem at all. So in summarising, uh, I think it's quite important uh, to, to to really define this boat. This is not a Bali. This is a performance boat. Um, you know, with carbon mast step, carbon lingerie. Uh, the boat is really a fast boat. It's built very, very well. The whole construction process is unique to, Bar to Katana uh, in that they, they infusion and the way that they infuse the foam and, 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 the, and the laminates is, is uh, something they've been doing for 30 years. So it's an iconic boat. Um, you know, I do hear some of the competitors calling it a Bali performance boat, which is completely uh, uninformed. Uh, you know, this, this boat will sail with the best of them. Um, I think you'll find that if you look at all the performance range, you'll find this boat is in the upper levels of the performance range now that we've sailed it. Um, and the quality of build is definitely way above any cruising boat. The quality we found to be pretty exceptional, while simple, very very well done so uh, you know the quality we liked the floors are cored every door is cored the hull is cored the uh, the bulkheads are carbon the superstructure is carbon the uh, the longerons carbon the mast post is carbon so generally all in all every effort has gone into making this boat as fast as possible and as light as possible but as strong as possible i think you'll you'll have to go a long way to find a more robust and, and, and better performing boat than the Katana Ocean Class 50.